Hello, everyone, and welcome to the live after show for uh, the final of the first Wait, chapter of Mass Effect. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. Hey, hey, everyone. Uh, except, so, uh, like, except two of us are dead. Two yes, of us. Yeah, true. Yeah. That's true. Maggie, yeah. your hair is so long now. I just I know. Seen it when we started uh, lockdown, it was like here. Very intense. But when I curly, started so. lockdown, it was like here, and now it's here. So I feel that. <laughs> I know it's getting so long. Way. I buzz mine since <laughs> lockdown. I need to. It's to be long. Yeah, so that many. was oh. amazing. I love oh like God. a freaking full episode of combat. I was so into it. it was very I, solid. you know what? It was very fitting that Devevo was terrible in the ship. I, I was like, I told everybody in advance. I was like, I'm going to be useless on the ship, and I really was. I still had like I, a plus. You had a plus two, levels? right? To investigation. The ship gave you a plus two. No, you I had a plus zero. You gave oh, me a plus, plus two, two for the yeah. ship. Yeah. Okay. I realized something. Before yeah. the ship, I failed every roll. Yeah. Except for stealth on the one yep. stealth at the beginning. On the ship, I failed zero rolls. <laughs> you really thankfully, very thankfully. swingy. Today. Very, very swingy. Yep. Yeah. After this, no, you're restricted great. from ground duty. You're always meant to be on a ship. You're never allowed <laughs> off. Should he be on a ship? I mean, he lost two people and the ship. Eh, it wasn't his fault. I'm just, you know. Job got done. Job got done. <laughs> Job got done. True. Job uh, got done. I uh, I saw in chat that someone is suggesting that the Cerberus or the Hanar equivalent of Cerberus uh, <laughs> should should find uh, Blanc Blanche's body in space and then rebuild him. Yeah, but the uh, thing is that instantly they oh. rebuild him, he starts off with all the red glowing cracks and stuff because his renegade points are just so high. <laughs> oh yeah, how many renegade points did we get so we can make our final app, I don't uh, think character sheet? Got sheets. like many at all. Like I think like. Lurida would get one, Blank Munch would get one, and then you fill up the rest of five with Paragons. So Devevo and Orland both get five Paragon, Blank Munch gets four, yeah. Lurida gets four. Still pretty even uh, split. Although Blank Munch was trying to use a, a lethal torpedo, he he was doing his best to kill. <laughs> to True. Okay, maybe ship. make that two, two Renegade, three Paragon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he did. I mean, he did totally, uh, you know, put people to sleep instead of killing them. So he did. He did. It was very good of him. Mm -hmm. I liked it. Well, yeah. let's he's, just he's talk about the, the fact that Lurida. You almost killed someone, dude. Okay, listen. I did that at the <laughs> beginning of combat when he had full health, full shields, and everything. I cannot be held accountable for the fact that Blanc pelted him. Taylor, I cannot be held ac accountable for my actions. Is this the bumper sticker for every police department everywhere we're going to use? No, really? We want to use that no, one? No, let's oh, not get no. go there. To be fair, though, it was thunder damage, and thunder damage is not like lightning or anything. Thunder damage is just like being thrown places. It's kind of like bludgeoning. It's also what flashbangs kind of do. So I'm like, honestly, he had a high constitution he's yeah. probably okay you don't think you really killed he might have a concussion and probably need to like go into oh, retirement yeah, like he's got is it force force damage force force is much more like it's a it's a damage type that is something like it's shearing stuff apart like ripping it like a sub <laughs> force like, force damage is, is like i don't know i guess it's force damage it doesn't really fit any of the other categories force damage yeah, is like, I have, like the way they word it, it. Force, force damage, damage is like breaking molecular bonds like it's just like physically breaking stuff at some molecular level because it's like disintegrate is force, I think, right? Yeah, a yeah. lot of my abilities, yeah. like, I couldn't really use because I would, like, hurt people. Oh, never the way mind. I, I think of, I was going to paste it. The way I think of thunder damage is sound waves because yeah. that's really yeah. what thunder is. Yeah. It's sound. It's, so. it's probably the most non-lethal of all the damages, even more so than bludgeoning. Yeah. So, like, yeah. because it was thunder, I'm kind of convinced that that guy is probably still fine because he's, you know, he's got a high con. He's a sergeant of the security Details. That is, is this is Lorita's internal dialogue that he's telling himself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lorita well, never well, actually phones to check up if the guy's alive or not because he couldn't take it. To be yep. fair, you know he didn't really know what happened on that front because he That's wasn't true. in that he wasn't in the room when it happened. Wasn't I, didn't, I didn't investigate it or anything. So yeah. yeah, he wasn't in the room and he like went invisible and was ran off to the other room. And to, it's like, not like the to... company's ever gonna prof a C sec with particular details about like how much you guys did for injuries because they don't want to get asked about why or how so also i imagine that that lab damage. probably cleaned up a bunch of stuff that they didn't want the csec to see before we even got back to investigate oh you won't go back to investigate hell no oh, they're gonna yeah, be like hey it's not your jurisdiction you did yeah, your see, thing so. sure that's you but you're never getting back but because yeah, you so it's basically just a report present. yeah but
but so you what, did convince what, them they are going to send a like a brief report to the citadel council about kind of what happened so yeah. what you're I saying mean, is, the, the thing is, is no it's not their jurisdiction no but that doesn't screen. mean there can't when, be consequences in places where it is their jurisdiction yeah exactly like, oh hey you're now wanted for murder if you ever literally step foot into any citadel like controlled yep. space and like that's probably not a thing they want a bunch of like <clears throat> yeah like again it was the thorian that like kind of ordered the murder but everyone there is like mm, but unless mm. they can prove that it was the thorian yeah. then which is then why they, like your argument about them. like you should give us some they, they're gonna send like a brief like explanation and like summary for their research which is probably gonna have them in trouble to a limited degree with the citadel yeah. council but they have plenty of money and i'm sure they'll be fine yeah <laughs> they'll be on like the blacklist of people to trade with for like 10 years and it'll just be like a you know their they shares will dive. on the wrist They'll, yeah. they'll be like hedge funds. They just throw money at it and fix everything. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and uh, even though there was no come up, well, I, I mean, Blancmange essentially got come up. And so I'm like, I'm glad he went out. I'm glad that, <laughs> you know. He went out uh, doing but, a but somewhat Orlan, noble. Somewhat, but Orlin, Orlin certainly didn't deserve uh, yeah. the fate he got. So, uh, I mean, oh well. I, I, I left it up to whether or not he noticed that the ship was falling apart. Mm. And my was by the was really low. <laughs> And by the time I told him, it was too late, right? Mm. So yeah, because I went first. I think if you had, if you had gone first in the turn order, turn order, we could have like justified it a little bit. But I was yeah. very happy to leave that to the dice roll. That was that was a personal choice to be like, this is the thing. I chose to give him a five in wisdom. Yep. Even no, then, like, it. it would be it would... like a thing to buff it at one point. You were kind of like going at the same time. So even if like you had gone first, like the responding to someone else in that situation is still going to slow you down advantage. a bit. Like, also, yeah. I like the idea that like advantage, there's yeah. shit going on and like our comms are not working properly. So it's like a little cut. So you only hear like yeah. a couple words and you're like, what? And then <laughs> not you turn to around, mention, what? Sure. Hole in the hull. <laughs> I'm sure breaking a ship, breaking apart while you're inside it is quite noisy. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it yeah, is for sure. I mean, yeah. Lurida has the experience of being a spaceship pilot before, so he kind of knew what was happening. He's like, nope, I'm out. <laughs> and I was with you, so it was different. Like, I think it might have yeah. been a different situation for me, too, if I wasn't in the same room as you. But I think the rough part for you guys was I rolled quite well on getting out more sh uh, shuttles every time. There were a lot of shuttles. And then I it was, was tough because we had shut down the AI, but like the ability to repair the systems always is like, well, that yeah. was just a temporary shutdown. I rolled shutdown. really well in the repair. <laughs> Uh, I rolled really well on launching more shuttles, and you rolled quite poorly to figure out that they were doing it with AI. Mm -hmm. um, which was just—I was having a hard time with this. Yeah, it was a combination of those things <laughs> together that was rough. Yeah. Um, I also was like, I spent all of my good rolls early, so I'm like, I'm not risking these hard maneuvers late, even yeah. though we need them. That's why I saved them. Yeah, it's it's rough. Whatever, and ha then has disadvantage. Like, even if we don't die, we just yeah. kind of end up being like ineffective the next round, and yeah, yeah. it just sort of. It's in an interesting spiral round. that you have to figure out. And that last round, I was like, well, we just need to hit it one more time, so I'm not going to yeah. even try the hard maneuver. I do, think, I do think the fact that ships have such high numbers for AC, like, just, like, makes you not register. You're like, we've got, like, 790 hit points left. That's so many. <laughs> FYI, yeah. uh, we were talking about it a moment ago. Uh, I rolled, the average for 12d10 is 66. I rolled 88. Yeah. 87 technically yeah 87 okay. no it, it, it was great yeah, like well, i have no problem in qualms with yeah. if we had all died it would have it would have been epic you rolled five max damages out of 12. <laughs> jesus it was a lot it was a lot you of rolled damage. five tens and then there was a nine and an eight and then it was all fives the lowest you rolled was a one there was only one of those and then there's one four I will say this, like I don't normally like D20 systems because you know, the same with D&D. &D. I, I play a lot of it, but obviously I play a lot of it, but I don't, I, I think it's like not always the fairest because you can you can have a plus seven and still roll poorly. We saw that with Tyler's stuff sometimes. Um, but I think that they did a really good job with uh, kind of skin it, reskinning like D&D &D with Mass Effect. Like I actually feel like it played out really well. D &D yeah, that first, yeah, never yeah, really the first two well hours. Range. But this did. Yeah, the first two hours was like all combat and it like felt really good and like we told a story with it and I thought that like it it really yeah. did translate really well. Yeah. I wanted to make sure you had like a few extra options and stuff in it because I always like that when there's when there's additional things to do or just kind of kind of constraints to work around on the co the combat rather than just get everyone to zero hit points. Especially large combats because um, otherwise it does drag if you're just like, yeah. I just gotta take them out, I just gotta take them out, I just gotta Yeah. And I liked that like 
we were trying not to kill them. So like it also added another element to it. Like I didn't have all my repertoire, right? Because I can't use all my biotic tech stuff because yeah, I would just same. kill everybody. Um, so it was interesting to have to kind of strategize. So the way I designed well. the fight, yeah, you're right. Like I designed it with a couple of different axes in mind because like obviously straight fight. Plus the fact that you would have to kind of be careful about when you use powers because you'd be like, right, I can go ham until they're low, but then I have to be cautious. I have to gauge where cautious is, you know? So you had that strategy. And then you had like, how are you going to destroy the node? Like, are you going to go and go ham on that to begin with? Are you going to go on it later? Are you going to change tactics throughout? So you had a few different things you were constantly thinking about throughout the fight rather than just, oh, whenever it gets to my turn, I'm just going to do shooting. Just shooting me. Or like, whenever I get to my turn, I'm just going to shoot them again. So like, which happens sometimes in DD, it's a bit boring. I thought this was a lot more interesting. Than I that. I have to admit that's basically what Blancmange was doing. <laughs> True, but you did change up who you were shooting and what you were shooting with, and like you you know you popped that grenade that took out the three troops. And after they went down, I was like, honestly, my guys are re re relatively ineffective without those guys shooting. So, but you also the played the character. Were more effective. <laughs> you also played the character that is more of just purely shooty, shooty. Like yeah. some of us are more support. Like I think Lauren and I play more. Like the, I our characters were more support, support oriented. Yes, yeah. I had a lot of damage stuff, but it was also stuff I couldn't really use because because I, I counter felt it. <laughs> And I would I, kill everybody, yeah. I definitely felt like I didn't get to do a lot during that combat because I kept <laughs> failing my one roll. So I didn't get to use much of my bonus actions. Like, well, I guess I'm hiding now. Well, I guess I'm hiding now. Well, I guess I'm hiding now. <laughs> that was more a roll situation, but I yeah, feel you. 100%. My investigation <laughs> rolls were pretty bad too on that ship. But. <laughs> eh, yeah, I knew it was traded. gonna happen. We traded. You had my hacking rolls on the ship. Look, I knew it in advance. I tried to warn you all. I was like, on the ship, I will be useless. I was so like, you're going to have a 40% chance. Yeah, you'll, you'll pass it like every other turn. And then you didn't pass it like <laughs> five turns. I like that I got two 91s in a row. So good. That was, so that was good. funny, especially once we'd already established the coffee narrative. The coffee? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so good. I imagine when the ship blows up, the camera's just sitting there and it rumbles. And then just like a Starbucks cup just goes towards the camera also i love the lorida blancmange like being like nice shooting nice piloting i'm like oh yeah so that was the really their last exchange was them yeah being, hey, nice job buddy i'm like oh shit boom yeah and uh, that's why like the post credit was... sequence is like is there anything i should know about blancmange no and then you like have like, that shot <laughs> <laughs> he was a good officer he was acceptable he was okay. He did his job. He did the minimum yeah. required by the job. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, we have to go. This was a little bit over. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming out. And I hope you enjoyed. It was so much fun. So I love you fun. all. You guys are great to play with. And obviously, Lovely viewers, thank, thank you for both. tuning in. It was a delight. Hi, everyone.